interesting friends. Happy Feature Friday, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me again in my sewing studio. Today we are going to revisit the save our layout area. We had people with questions about that and wanting to know if there were other ways to do things um, and what happens if situations. So we are going to go over some more of saving your quilt layout and bringing it back up after your uh, robot's been turned off or if there's been a power outage or who knows what could happen. Um, but we're going to go over a little bit more of how to use that save feature and bring it back up when you need to. Let's go ahead and turn around and look at what we're working with. So I have a little quilt on my frame here. It's all set up and ready to go. I have plenty of uh, backing and a little bit of batting sticking out, but today we are not going to set our quilt area on our batting and backing. We're gonna actually set it in a different place, um, which will help some of you with bringing back up your saved layout. Um, we had some questions about, well, what happens when you roll your quilt and you're no longer where you might have marked your um, point of origin? I'm gonna show you a different way to do it. So here we are on our robotic screen. We've got our opening screen here and it's wanting us to set our quilt area. So instead of setting the safe area on our quilt back and batting, I am actually going to push my machine all the way to the very back left corner, as far as it's gonna go. So I can't move this any farther into position than where it is. It's as far back as it can go, and it's as far left as it can go. This is going to be my new point of origin. That way, no matter how much I roll the quilt, or if I turn off and turn back on and I'm in a different spot, this is always gonna be my point of origin, and I won't lose it because I know exactly where I am with my machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the plus sign here on my display. And now it says move your machine to the front right corner of your quilting area. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna slide all the way down my frame and I am gonna come to the front rightmost corner. So I am as far over as I can get to my machine right and I'm gonna pull it as far forward as I can to set that area as well. So I'm gonna hit my plus sign. And now I've got my safe area set with a full width and height of my particular table. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that check mark. And now we know our point of error origin is all the way over there in the top left corner. So no matter what we do on the quilt, when we save our layout, we can always get back to that spot down there. So let's come on over with our machine and I'm gonna set my layout area for my little quilt top here. So we are over here on the left-hand side. We've got layout highlighted. We're gonna come over to the right-hand side of our display and I'm gonna hit my plus sign and we are told to set the first point of our pattern box. I'm gonna move my machine just outside the top left corner of my quilt top and I'm gonna hit my plus sign and then it says set the next point of my pattern box. I'm gonna slide over to the right. I'm gonna do this in a two point and I'm gonna set it about here. I can come a little bit further down but I am comfortable just about here. So I'm gonna hit my check mark and now I've got my layout box for my design and this is going to be just my quilt top. If I use the little buttons over here, I can toggle and see my full view and you can see my little quilt box inside my full frame space that we just marked as our safe area. I'm gonna go back to my pattern box that I'm working with and we're gonna go to the left-hand side of our display. I'm gonna touch my pattern icon, and I know what design I want, and it should be in my recents. So let's see, there it is, my bubble meander. And I'm gonna hit the check mark, and here's my design. We have a little bit of work to do because obviously I've got some space to fill in, and this is pretty big here, um, so we've got to get it to fit inside our space. I'm going 
from edit now that I've added a pattern into my pattern box. Coming over to the right and I'm gonna hit my repeat button first. And when I do that, I need to give myself some horizontal repeats. So we're gonna do that. And I think three is appropriate, but I need to get it all to fit within my quilt top space that I marked with my layout. So I'm gonna go to scale next and I'm gonna use my smart scale feature that I've got here, but you can always use your plus and minuses and your slider bars to get that into your layout space. When I hit my smart scale, whoop, it's taken my design, it's filled in my space perfectly. I'm using circles, so I always double check and make sure they still look like circles and they haven't flattened out into little funny ovals. So now that we've got this set, this is where I want to save. I'm gonna come back over to the left-hand side of my display and hit layout again, because that's where we save our layout. Over here on the right-hand side, as I showed you before, we've got our little disc with our pencil. Ooh, I'm out of focus. Our little disc with our pencil, and when I hit that, I get my keyboard so that I can name this. Um, since the shape of this is um, st a star shape, I'm gonna type in star, and then I've got tons of polka dots on here, so I'm gonna call it star dots. When I've got it up here and it's named how I like, I can hit my green check mark here. And it's telling me that my layout is saved. And like I told you last time, I never ever trust my computer to do what it said and my Coltig machine is no different. So I'm gonna come to my file folder that's right above the save button on the right hand side of our display and just double check that star dots is in there. That is what I saved. So I know that my layout is there and waiting for me to come back to it. So I can hit cancel. And now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is stitch this out and then we'll work with it in another minute. I'll go ahead and do that while I put you guys on. All right, so I have stitched out two full rows of our design. So we've got one back here that's rolled up a little bit and one here I nested in between and we are all finished with that, but maybe I am done for the day, it's time to go to bed, or maybe I've gotta run some errands or whatever. I need to turn my robot off because I'm done quilting. Sometimes we can't finish our quilt all in one day. So I am going to go ahead and turn my robot off so you guys can see me do it up, oh, off. So hi everybody, you can see me in my screen reflection. I'm gonna turn it back on, maybe it's the next day, maybe it's later in that day and we wanna come back to our quilt. So I'm gonna show you guys how to bring back up your saved pattern with our point of origin that we used and then we're gonna nest it back into place so that we can continue on with our quilt. Um, you know, I'm doing a little tiny quilt right now. It's maybe a, just a baby size or a crib size, but sometimes we have big quilts that we're working on and you really can't get them all done in one day. It might drive you crazy if you do. Okay, so our robotic system is back up and running, but instead of doing this, moving to our back corner for our safety area, we are in layout, as you can see here on the left-hand side of our display. We are coming over to the right-hand side of our display, and we're going to our little file here and opening that up and finding the layout that we saved for this quilt top. It was star dots. Oops, top touch on the right one, um, it highlights blue for me and it brings the name down here where it says file name, it says star dots. And then I'm gonna come over to the right corner of my display and hit open. And when I do that, it tells me to move my machine to the quilt area origin and press okay. So remember we set our point of origin all the way over at the very back left corner of the quilt frame. So I am as far left as I can go and as far back as I can go. So I can press the check mark here on my display and it is going to bring up all of my saved information. So I'm gonna bring this towards us so we can see that. So you can see that I've got my whole um, 
table layout and then my little pattern design in here. And if I kind of swing my machine back onto my quilt top, if I have done things right, my blue cross hairs coming kind of vertical, if I line that up with my pattern, it should line up kind of where I start my pattern on the outside here. You can see my stitching is outside my quilt top because I want to make sure I get that whole edge and sometimes you don't line things up quite straight. So I do quilts a little bit off of my quilt top. So if we switch from our full view of all of our layouts to our individual pattern layout, we have all of our little bubbles here. So we've got this all set and ready to go. And one thing I like to do is kind of move my crosshairs and just double check that everything transferred over. I'll go to my start point and make sure that I'm near the start point of that row that I had stitched out before. So everything lines back up. I pulled my design back up with my point of origin and what's on the screen is lining back up with the row that I previously stitched out before I turned my robot off. So now we want to nest and do our next row. So we can go to our home screen from here at the top left corner of our display and we can come over to our nesting feature. I've got my nesting down here at the bottom, my little hearts. And if I touch that, I get all of my nesting commands. My first one, of course, is select and mark your nesting point. And if you guys have been watching Quilter's Easy Corner for a while with my Feature Fridays, we've all nested together before. So I am going to move my machine along my quilt and put my needle down in my fabric on one of the points of my design. And I always put my needle in my fabric, but if that makes you guys nervous doing that, marking your nesting point, you know you can use a pen, pencil, or chalk that's meant for your fabric. Just make sure you are comfortable with it and you know it's gonna come off before you go marking your quilt top. But I put my needle down on my stitching line. And that is me marking my nesting point. Since I've done that, I can hit the green check mark on my display. Now it's telling me to roll my quilt. So I can come across and release my roller bars and roll my quilt. And because that needle is in my fabric, I'm gonna be very careful. I'm not gonna to roll too fast. I don't wanna put any stress on the fabric where that needle is in my quilt. Don't wanna cause any tears or anything by moving too fast. I can go ahead and lock my roller bars back into place. And now I have the direction roll the quilt. I've done that so I could hit my green check mark. Now it's telling me to move my machine to my nesting point. And because my needle is in my nesting point, I don't need to move my machine anywhere. But if you've used a marking tool to mark this instead of using your needle, then you would need to move your machine into place. I'm there so I can hit my check mark. And now it's nested the rows for me. The gray row up here is the row that I've already stitched out. The black row down here is the row that it wants to stitch out next. My rows are very well nested for this this specific design that I've chosen. They just touch exactly the way I would want them to. There's no big gaps in it, so I don't need to move this at all. So I'm happy with that, and I can hit my check mark. And now it's telling me that my nesting's complete. So I can go ahead and take my needle out of my fabric and start my stitch out. So that is a very quick and easy way to turn off your machine when you've got something to do or if you're just done stitching for the day and come back to your quilt. You save your layout, you have your point of origin that you're very comfortable with and using kind of that back left corner instead of somewhere on your quilt top or your backing, that makes it really easy. You always know where that is and then you can come back to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching this row. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my needle's engaged and I am gonna start and I'm gonna get going. I'll come back to you guys in just a minute. All right, here we are my quilting friends. Another row done on our quilt. 
and it's looking pretty good. So I guess I get to keep chugging along and hopefully I will get this done today. Thank you guys so much for joining me for another Feature Friday. I hope that today's videos answered a couple of questions as follow-ups to the video I did a couple weeks ago on saving your quilt layout area and bringing it back up at another time. You know, we went over how to set a different point of origin off of your quilt top and off of your backing fabric, and also how to bring it back up after you've turned off your machine in the middle of a quilt instead of right at the beginning. It is a big process and it's definitely something to get used to that takes a little bit of practice, but once you know what you're doing, it's a great and helpful tool to have, especially when you're working on those big quilt tops and you just can't do it all in one day. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you soon. Thank you.